Can you imagine life without a voice, life without singing, without voice production? Anytime you turn on the TV, it would be mute. Even as a pianist, I find that the vocal arts are very important. My piano teachers used to tell me, sing at the piano. Arthur Rubinstein had a phrase, I learned how to play the piano from the great singers of my time. I did a little bit of research, and one of my favorite composers, Frederick Chopin, had said, the fingers must do the singing, and if you wish to play the piano, you must learn how to sing. And I find that I'm using exactly the same words to my students. There are so many similarities between piano technique, what you have to do to get a beautiful sound, support, relaxation, using the wrist for breathing, and using music as a language, the same as you do for voice. I had an advantage. I married an opera singer, Louis Quillico, and he's been giving me little hints and told me to be master of my own body, use your brains, and he established nine laws of singing. And I will give the floor to him. The first law was how to stand on your feet and why is it important to do so? Well, let's, let's put it this way. When you build a house, you start from the ground up. And the voice is exactly the same thing. This is the big problem with singers in general. They've learned one thing. You make a sound, huh. But what is, what create that sound? What is the thing that is imperative for it? And this is the thing. If you, for instance, you don't know how to stand, and I'm sorry to say it, uh, for instance, I said I saw the, 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 the three tenor, and I could watch, I watched even the way they were standing. And uh, their, their feet have, because you have to find a certain buoyancy. And if you don't have, uh, flexibility in your feet. Another thing, it, it's not only the buoyancy, but I will show you what I mean by this. Now, for instance, if I stand in my two feet, now my whole body is completely, uh, uh, there's a tension from my head to toe. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Now, what, just watch the top of my thorax here. You will notice one thing. The moment I, I move, automatically the old tensions disappear. That means you have to take away the tension from up here to be able to transport it somewhere. Where do you transport? You transport it on the leg that you're standing on. Now the thing is, it's very important, this leg that you are standing on you're not only standing on the, on the leg, you are really standing on the ball of the feet. That means that gives you your buoyancy you want. If you are on the heel, there's no buoyancy. You have to feel, more or less, there's another thing that is very imperative for that, is that you have to feel like a boxer. A boxer is never with his heel in the back, you know, boom. You see, so once in a while you see a boxer that stands that way. But in general, you, you see the boxer standing in certain way to have completely buoyancy of his body. And this is, for me, the most important thing. You change leg that you are on this leg. You go back, there, relaxation. Or I go back, you notice that tension come up. Now I'm gonna move the other leg. Back, there it is. But always on the ball of the feet always on the ball of the feet. There's one thing about our voice that we never understood, that 95% of the people don't understand, that we are exactly like a violin. We have two chords, and we have the air, that is the bow. Now what is the most important thing? Is it the bow or the air? Give me an answer on this. The bow or the air, the, the, the bow is the air. The air, yes. The bow is more important. No, it's the opposite. The chords are the one that dictate the exactly. Vibrate. Exactly, because what, what is happening? If you give me too much hair on the chord, it'll vibrate. Yeah. The violin, what, what do you think, you, you, when you see a great violin, you see him, he's got practically nothing that holds here. Yeah. Right? That's very flexible for him. Then on top of that, the, the, on top of that, 
see him, the way he takes the ball, the way he puts it on the... Mm. Uh, uh, the other day I was looking at a, a concert and it was so amazing the way he would deposit his ball on the chord. And I says, my God, if Singer could understand vision, what is the connection between your chord, your air, the chord of the violin, the, the, the bow of the violin, it's exactly the same thing, you know? For instance, when they, when they play, they don't do like this. They go like this. Now, there's a lot of air between the bow and the chords. Us, it's exactly the same thing. It's to be able to translate into your mind that to give an opening for the air to come, then get back together, and then the air comes out. And the moment it touch, it touch your chord, it does exactly like you if you try to touch your eyes. Yep. And automatically, the air doesn't keep on pushing. No, the, the chord says, stop. And this is, this is now we're going to talk about the breathing after and all that. 